I'm here with Dr. Melissa Gressner, a psychologist, speaker, and coach who helps people develop their inner core confidence. She's here to tell us how we can tap into our inner confidence for success in business and life. Dr. Gressner, should I approach you so formally? <laughs> you can call me Melissa. That's okay. what I tell all my clients. Okay, Melissa. <laughs> so confidence is a struggle for a lot of us, especially us women. Yes. I have personally struggled with that and I don't even know where to start. So where do you begin to tackle such a challenging topic? Yes. Well, let me, since you mentioned yourself, first I'll say ambitious professionals tend to work and struggle with their confidence. It's oh. because they're so <laughs> ambitious, right? And when with our ambitions, we're always exposing ourselves to new challenging things. Mm -hmm. And so of course we're gonna expose any anxiety or insecurities that yeah. we have. So it's a myth really that ambitious people are always strong and confident. Mm -hmm. They actually have to do work. I've done my work too, um, to become more confident so that they can be more successful in life. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe I've found that in working with clients that core confidence is really being confident in who you are, both inside and out, and being able to really project that to the world. Yeah. So it was funny that you mentioned that, you know, trying all these new things can sometimes bring anxiety because that yes. is something that I've had a struggle with and the fact that I think that that's where the imposter syndrome comes from. You keep doing something new and when you do something new, you haven't seen yourself in it. Yes. And you can't, you, you feel like you, you aren't that yet. So yes. you have to kind of teach yourself that you are that or you can be. You do. And at first, you know, many times it's believing, it's starting. And that's why I developed this program and uh -huh. a process called Core Confidence. Yeah. Um, so that people, it could be the foundation to work on that. It's also a myth that confidence is something that we're born with. Yes. Right? Confidence is something that's learnable adjustable and it's capable of reconnection because I've also found a lot that people maybe have had confidence but then they've got distracted mm -hmm. or they've had a new experience and then they feel insecure again so we can learn to reconnect and grow in that so yeah. it is a myth that people just have it it is something that we can learn to increase and develop in ourselves okay so what's one of the first steps to developing that core confidence for yourself Yes, so my, let me tell you just the quickly, the core confidence is an acronym, uh -huh. core. And so what that is, the first step is C. C is creating a positive and powerful mantra for uh -huh. yourself. O is orienting to the internal versus external. Uh -huh. R is about reconnecting to your mind, body, and soul. Uh -huh. And the last step is E, excelling with practice and application. Okay. Um, I could go on about all these steps much more <laughs> in depth, but really putting all these steps together, I've worked with clients and I found that when you do this all together, I do this in a process where we have introspective exercises, um, lots of reflection, mm -hmm. and it's a journey to kind of find one's confidence. Uh -huh. And so this is a process that I've worked on um, for several years now with clients. Hopefully one day a book, the forthcoming book that will be coming. I can't wait. Um, and so I really feel like just starting the process, um, you start uh, there. Okay. And I saw, I thought this was interesting that you do walking sessions with people. I thought that was really unique. <laughs> I do. Well, recently, that's a, that's a program I'm just rolling out and I've uh -huh. just recently started. So oh, nice. I'm excited as Denver gets more warm right now in the springtime um, to do more and more of. But walk-in talks are great because also we know that, I don't know if you're familiar with, the, familiar with this, excuse me, that being in nature and being outside is really kind of restorative and reparative. Yeah for depression and anxiety. I'm a psych nerd, so yes. <laughs> okay, and so, you know, it's great. I love talking to clients in my office, but it's really important to kind of get outside. And some people mm -hmm. are much more comfortable that way too, yeah. um, to be walking side by side rather than sitting down in a more formal office kind of feeling. Nice, well, I love the innovation there. Thank you. <laughs> Any last tips that you'd like to share with our viewers? The last tip, the kind of the takeaway I'd say is that a lot of people get really intimidated about change or even kind of the therapeutic process and mm -hmm. that change sometimes doesn't have to be this really big scary thing that I normally tell people to start with. It can be as simple as a light switch uh -huh. that you kind of can think of it kind of philosophically for yourself to as simple as I'm going to start changing today and you just switch it on. So sometimes when we make things more simple like that, mm -hmm. people are more motivated and they feel like it's more accessible. So really to kind of tell yourself that whether you're working alone or with a therapist, that change can really start um, anywhere. 
Wow, that's empowering. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing those tips and for that empowering light switch that you just gave <laughs> us at the end. Good, thank you so much, Crystal. This was lovely. Thank you.